Trademarks responsible for the content of this advertising. It's not just about the destination, but how you get there. Find out more at Wagon Trail RV or WagonTrailRV.com. Nevada's newest seat in Congress is up for grabs. State Senate Majority Leader Stephen Horsford and Danny Tarkani are locked in a close race a month out. Tonight, the two square off. Ralston reports next. And now, Ralston reports with John Ralston. Welcome to Ralston Reports. We'll bring you newsmakers and commentary you won't find anywhere else. Tonight, a special campaign edition of Ralston Reports, a debate for Nevada's new congressional district. District 4 encompasses much of Clark County as well as rural Nevada, including Lincoln, Nye, White Pine, Esmeralda, and Mineral, as well as part of Lyon. Boy, it's a big district. Joining me, the two candidates hoping to be the first congressional representative of District 4, State Senate Majority Leader Stephen Horsford, a Democrat, and his Republican foe, Danny Tarkani, is making his fourth bid for elective office. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Let's start, you know, I saw you put out a tweet right before uh, the program that you are gonna, you're gonna show people how you're gonna strengthen the middle class. How? First, by standing for them, uh, by fighting for them, is what is, I've been doing my entire life. As the head of the Culinary Academy, a joint partnership with our largest employers here in Las Vegas, as well as the Culinary and Bartenders Union, we train thousands of people for careers in the hospitality industry every year. And we got a dedicated group of people who help pe uh, people who come into the doors, they're unemployed, they walk out with the training they need and a placement in a job. Uh, Those who have a job get the skills I, I and the training they need though. to upgrade. What are you going to do in Congress to strengthen the middle class? That's what people want to know. Well, actually though, it's what you've already done, not just what you talk about doing. And that's the difference between me and my opponent. I've actually spent more than 11 years working in partnership with the private sector, with labor, with the community, helping people get the training that they need. This is a model program that's been recognized by Secretary of Labor Elaine Chao under the Bush administration, as well as Secretary Hil Hilda Solis under the current administration. So doesn't tell me what you're gonna do to strengthen the middle class as a congressman. First, what are you what gonna I, do? What I'm not going to do is do what my opponent is uh, proposing, which is to support, uh, support a Ryan budget, which would turn Medicare into a voucher program all to give a tax break to wealthy people or to main corporate, uh, uh, maintain corporate subsidies for big banks and big oil companies, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fight for the middle class. You know you haven't told me. I'm going to give you one more chance and then we're going to go over to your opponent. You haven't told me one thing you would do and that's what you said. You told people out there on Twitter, your tens of thousands of followers, sir, that you're going to strengthen the middle class. How? We don't know. No. It, it, first of all, it's about investing in things that get people to work right now like infrastructure in our roads, our highways, our crumbling schools. Look, we have an enormous unemployment problem in this state. Of the 150,000 people that are unemployed, these are real people. Half of them, nearly half of them, are in the construction, uh, architecture, and engineering fields. These are people that we need real solutions for right now because when people are working, our economy is growing, and that will be my number one focus in Congress. How are you going to strengthen the middle class, I sir? I agree completely with my opponent, but <clears throat> the problem with his statement is he has a record in, in what Carson City that just doesn't fit that. What does that you mean? Know, well, because, you know, in, as a state legislator, all he did when we faced the worst economic crisis in our generation as a majority leader, all he did was impose additional taxes on the middle class, for one, let's say the car registration tax. Why people can't afford to pay for their homes, put food on the table for their families. He's going to double the cost of car registrations for the average Americans. And then with respect to jobs, because that is the most important thing for the people here in Nevada and in, in the middle class, he, he passed a tax bill that doubled the license fee, the business license fees for businesses. He po imposed an additional tax increase on the payroll taxes for businesses. From the time he was a majority leader to the present, our unemployment rate has doubled has doubled since that time period. Okay. His well, policies have worked. We're, we're going to debate that in a second because I know he's going to want to respond to that. But you didn't tell me either. What are you sure. going to do in Congress to strengthen the right. middle class? we got to create jobs, just like my opponent had said. But I have real plans and real solutions to those things. We've talked before about some of these things. First and foremost, we got to get back to a balancing step between regulations. Uh, these regulations the current administration are imposing, the most of any administration in the history of our country, are killing small businesses. We need to have a balancing act between the cost benefit or what those regulations are. If the cost to jobs is not is higher than the benefits that are be, being provided, let's not pass those things. Give me things. a couple regulations you get rid of, Mr. Tarkanian. Well, the first and foremost is there's a regulation on the new uh, equipment on equipment that uh, contractors are going to use in 2014. I have a, uh, a contractor who's in North Las Vegas, been in business for almost two decades there, 
buddy bird construction and he told me that he said his business is going to have to close down in two thousand and fourteen because the e p a has imposed these new restrictions on his equipment so there's equipment are obsolete no one will buy him here in the united states and he can't afford to get new equipment every place we go you hear stories about all over all over the place you know why is it that we ha it takes ten years to get the new freeway from las vegas to, to phoenix going when we need jobs right now because the regulations are so burdensome that it's stopping us from creating jobs and moving I forward with our economy. No money to build that freeway. No. I, I know you. I know you want to respond to what he said about your record. I, I assume you do. Well, my question to my opponent, in all honesty, you attacked me for finding re revenues to help fund our schools. Those are the exact same revenues that Republican Governor Brian Sandoval passed. He signed that bill. And in fact, he's proposing it as his budget solution for 2013. And other Republicans in the legislature support it as well. Are they wrong? Mr. Tarkanian? I, I love the fact that you want to paint me as a Republican candidate that you won't talk about my positions personally. So you are absolutely wrong. I would never, I would never, when I go back to Washington, D.C., I will never impose an additional tax on the, in, on the citizens here in our country while we're in this type of a recession. Every economist that will tell you that the last thing you do during an economic recession like we have now is impose additional taxes Did on people. Did you have people. any evidence at all that the taxes that you talked about, which, by the way, are fairly minuscule, including the one he just talked about have anything to do with the recession that hit Nevada? Seven hundred and fifty-six billion dollars, uh, million dollars, billion do million dollars in taxes. Mm -hmm. Seven hundred fifty-six billion dollars in taxes is not minuscule, John. And when you start imposing additional burdens on small businesses, the, the doubling the pay, uh, the tax to get businesses started, increasing the payroll taxes, common sense will tell you that's going to stop businesses from wanting to hire more people, and that's the last thing we want now. Go it's ahead. interesting that my opponent says that he's a fiscal conservative that's going to go to Washington and change things, but yet. The very proposal that he's attacking me, or, or let me just say the anonymous billionaires who are actually funneling money to his campaign are the ones who are attacking me. Those are revenues who are that... these anonymous billionaires? Wait a second. Who are these people? Yeah, the very very good question. Who are these people? But the, but the more important question is, these are solutions that we worked on a bipartisan uh, approach with Governor Sandoval, a Republican, mind you, and Republicans in the legislature. Why? Because we didn't want to decimate funding for education. And they've already said that those are revenues that we need to continue for another tax, two years. That payroll tax is a dumb tax, though, isn't it? Well, isn't and, it and, doesn't and, it inhibit job and, creation? And let me, no, let me say, actually, there there is analysis that shows that we've had 25 months of consecutive <laughs> growth here in Nevada. Wow. So my opponent is wrong. He's wrong on the issues. He's extreme. He ran to the right of Sharon Angle in 2010, and now he wants to come and talk up. about being a, a moderate. You know, he's bringing Sharon Angle into this race. Yeah. I want to show people when we come back how Stephen Horsford is bringing Sharon Angle into this race. I thought she was gone forever. And during the break, we're going to try to get Brian Sandoval to call into this program and see which of these candidates he supports. Stick around. We'll be back in a moment. Have a question or comment? You can email John, RalstonReports at gmail.com. So, you like to travel? Yes. You don't want to pay for it? I'd rather not. Well, then you're going to want to wake up with the Wagners on Friday morning. <laughs> we have the top seven jobs where you can travel for free. We'll tell you all about it Friday. I'm Dean Heller, and I approve this message. Our priority are jobs, jobs, jobs. Shelly Berkeley voted to use your tax dollars to bail out Wall Street and bail out Detroit. She spent your money on a failed trillion-dollar stimulus, voted with Nancy Pelosi 90% of the time, all while Nevada leads the nation in unemployment and foreclosures. Shelley Berkeley's big government spending has failed Nevada. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Where are the jobs? At the Southern Nevada Water Authority, we know how important water quality is to you. It's why we take great pride in meeting our surpassing federal health standards for tap water. To ensure your protection, we run hundreds of thousands of tests a year on over 30,000 water samples we collect valley-wide. And we operate one of the most advanced drinking water treatment system. After all, they didn't hire us just because we look good in lab coats. <laughs> For information about water quality and home treatment systems, ask the authority. I'm retired from the Army Reserve after 20 years of service. I was very proud to serve with Colonel Heck in Iraq. There was never any question about his professionalism or his integrity. While very few things are comforting for parents, and I know in, in the moments when there were losses, parents could appreciate that a very decent human being, Colonel Heck, was there to provide the absolute best. I'm Joe Heck, and I approve this message. 
I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. These appliances could have been made here, in America, but a company called Global Tech maximized profits by paying its workers next to nothing under sweatshop conditions in China. When Mitt Romney led Bain, they saw Global Tech as a good investment, even knowing that the firm promoted its practice of exploiting low-wage labor to its investors. Mitt Romney, tough on China? Since when? I'm attorney Jason Cassidy. Do you have a will or living trust? Don't leave your family with more questions than answers. Call Cassidy Law Offices today at 650-4480, where wills are only $99, with convenient locations in Summerlin and Henderson. And now, Ralston Reports. Welcome back across the state to Ralston Reports. It's really across the state, this district, CD4, the new district, and covers a lot of rural Nevada and some of southern Nevada, too. Stephen Horsford and Danny Tarkanian are the nominees for the first time in this new district. All right, I don't know if you've seen it yet, Mr. Tarkanian, but your opponent has a new ad on about you, and it's very, very flattering. Take a look. Danny Tarkanian thinks he'd fit right in with Tea Party Republicans in Washington. And I'm one of those crazy uh, radicals. They'd end Medicare and privatize Social Security, criminalize a woman's right to choose even in cases of rape or incest, abolish the Department of Education, cut taxes on billionaires, and raise them on the middle class. And I'm one of those crazy uh, radicals. Danny Tarkanian and Tea Party Republicans, they're not looking out for Nevada's middle class. I'm Stephen Horsford, and I approve this message. Are you really a crazy <laughs> radical? Of course not, John. You know what this shows? It shows how desperate my opponent has gotten that he has to adopt the National Democrat standard to go after uh, Republicans in swing states. In fact, I'm sure you saw this uh, article in Political just two days ago where it says Democrats stretch the Tea Party label on ads, talking about how they try to portray good Republicans as Tea Party extremists when What's they're not. What's wrong with being a Tea well, Party the, person? the point is, John, if I was, let me answer your question first. If I was really an extremist, do you think I would have Frank Hawkins, a prominent Democrat here in Nevada and the president of the NAACP support me. If I was such an extremist, do you think that Jim Rogers, arguably the most uh, uh, um, important or, or um, credible independent in the state of Nevada would sit here and support me? And if you look at the statements that he used, he takes this little sound bite that has a snippet. I mean, you can tell in the snippet. Well, what, is, what is the context of that, though? You called yourself a crazy yeah, exactly. radical, didn't you? Well, in the snippet, you can see that I'm being sarcastic by my language and the way I said it. And of course, he had, uh, my opponent would cut it off after three words. What I was referring to was I was talking about some common sense solutions that the Democrats are so out of touch with that they would consider that being a crazy radical. Let me give you an example because this is one of the issues my opponent thinks is the most important I, I also do here in, in this race, and that's education. You know, I want to, as two years ago, my, well, first of all, let's talk about my opponent's position. He wants to keep the Department of Education intact the way it's going, even though it's failed since it was implemented in 1979, our education system has gotten worse. Two years ago on your show, I stated right here that I wanted to preserve the important parts of the Department of Education, such as financial aid, head starts, and even some issues with Title I and the disability children, and then take the rest of that money, give it in block grants to the states, and allow the state of the states to determine and the locality okay. determine how you best All educate right. your children. L me, does that sound let extremist? Let well, that, that does not sound extremist to me. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people who think the Department of Education is a dinosaur. Yeah, keep some of the federal uh, monies that he talked about, but let the states have flexibility. Why is that extremist? Let's talk about where my opponent's record is as a self-proclaimed crazy radical. He ran as an extreme candidate to the right of Sharon Angle in 2010. He said How do you not, define that to the right of Sharon Angle? Let me, he said that he loved SB 1070, the anti-immigration law in Arizona that he wanted to bring to Nevada, that the Chamber of Commerce, the Nevada Development Authority, the Latin Chamber of Commerce, and the Nevada Re Resort Association all opposed. Why? Because it would have threatened our convention business. Thousands of people would have lost their jobs if my uh, opponent's idea that he said he loved SB 1070 would have come. Also, my opponent wants to turn Medicare into a voucher program, a voucher that says, here's the base amount of money we're going to provide you. 48 million seniors rely on Medicare. 40 million of them are 65 years and older. If they turn that into a voucher program and the health care costs escalate, 
what are they going to do? But They're going to be left on their own. Second, he wants a, to wait abolish a second, wait the a Department of Education. No, stop, stop, stop. He said it, he said it was unnecessary. You, you, now he's you coming said on your show. Medicare. You said end Medicare. He, wants to turn he has it, never said end Medicare. He Neither wants to is turn any, it into a voucher program. But, but, but that's not ending Medicare. Why do it Democrats is, is, say end Medicare no, no, when the Republicans don't want to end Medicare? Step back, John. They don't. This is about people. My grandmother lived in a nursing home for 27 years of her life. She was on disability and Medicaid. My grandmother had a stroke and was paralyzed. And I think of my, my grandmother and other seniors, our parents and our grandmothers like her, grandparents like them, who have no other choice no but one to wants rely to Medicare, on Medicare. Senator. They no want to turn it into a voucher no, program, no, no, John, and that, it's, that it's is a, wrong. It's, it's, it's extreme. You, you know he what? wants to abolish the okay. Department of Education. Okay. He said right. it was unnecessary. Right. You know what? You know what? I'm going to let you, I'm gonna let you talk. We're going to talk about entitlements in a serious way, believe it or not. Uh, we're not going to throw Granny off the cliff ever on Ralston Report, so stick around. Follow John on Twitter. Go online to twitter.com slash Ralston Reports. This is what President Obama said the jobless rate would be if we pass a stimulus, 5.6%. But this is what the jobless rate actually is, 8.1%. The difference? About 3.7 million jobs. Obama's spending drove us $5 trillion deeper in debt. And now we have fewer jobs than when he started. What Obama promised versus what he delivered. American Crossroads is responsible for the content of this advertising. Something inside of me just told me I need to get checked out. The doctor said we found something and we need to get into surgery. Beth Gomez had stage three colon cancer. So we scheduled an appointment for a second opinion at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. To find out more about treatment options for complex and late-stage cancer, go to cancercenter.com. You'll be able to see our treatment results for many types of cancers and how they compare to national averages. You can also check for participating insurance plans. At Cancer Treatment Centers of America, every resource, every one of us, everything we do every day is focused on you, our patient, your treatment, your healing, your survival. You had a whole team. I wasn't just going to fight this battle. They were going to stand beside me and fight it. Our physicians, clinicians, and nurses are highly experienced and dedicated. We use state-of-the-art technology and give you treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer makes you really appreciate what's important in your life. Please call or go to cancercenter.com today. Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Care that never quits. Escapes Vegas. Shelley Berkeley voted with Nancy Pelosi and the Liberal Democrats 99% of the time. Pelosi's wasteful stimulus? Berkeley voted yes. Pelosi's government takeover of health care? Berkeley voted yes. Pelosi's taxpayer funded bailout of Wall Street banks? Berkeley voted yes. Nancy Pelosi's liberal spending is bankrupting America and killing Nevada jobs. And Shelley Berkeley voted yes. The National Republican Senatorial Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. And now, Ralston Reports. Welcome back across Nevada to Ralston Reports. We're having a debate for the 4th Congressional District. This is a new district in Nevada. covers parts of rural Nevada and parts of Clark County with Stephen Horsford and Danny Tarkanian. I know you want to respond to what he said. Let's let's go to him real quick, though, okay? Immigration. Uh, he talked about SB 107. You did embrace no, that during John, the Senate race, did you not? John, what I said on your station was very clear. I said that Arizona, as a, in, as a state in the 10th Amendment, has a right and an obligation to protect the health and welfare of their citizens, and that they felt that people were coming to the country illegally and creating a dangerous environment for the citizens, they had a right to do it. I also said that I don't see that position here in Nevada, and that our Nevada elected officials, including Mr. Horsford, would be able to make up that decision. Never did I say it was right for Nevada. He said he loved it. Well, I know. He you, did say he liked it. I know that. Yeah, I don't loved know if you ever said it was his exact okay. word. Yeah. 
Well, uh, you have a great op, um, position of misrepresenting what I say, and you're completely inaccurate in, in all of them. And let's talk about the uh, the Medicare. Never have I said I endorsed the Ryan plan. Never have I said I, I was in favor of a voucher system. You don't what endorse I, the Ryan no, plan? No, I think the Ryan plan is a great start to a very, very important dialogue. First of all, I am the only candidate, not you, I am the only candidate that has signed a pledge not to affect or take away any benefits from the seniors with Medicare. In fact, my father, who's had two major surgeries these past two years, would not be around probably if we didn't have Medicare. I would not touch a what, Medicare. What is a great start, man? Because you, you you went well, after him for Democratic talking points, and I admit there are some of those in that sure. ad. But that's it, a Republican talking point. That's what Mark Amaday said when he was running. Else, it's a great start. What does that mean? Mark is such an intelligent congressman, isn't he? <laughs> what now, does that great, mean? It's a great, a great start. A great start is this. Look at we need to do something to preserve and protect Medicare. The Ryan plan says we will keep the same benefits for anybody who's 55 and older, and anybody who's under 55 can either continue with Medicare, not go to a voucher system, continue with Medicare, or go to a voucher system and have the same type of insurance a congressman or senator has. If you have that option, that's great. Now, while I said it's a great start is, I don't know all the details of how it's going to be funded and how it's all going to be implemented, but I ask the citizens that are going to be voting in this race, would you like to have the option of Medicare or the option of what the congressman and senators You're have? You're talking to directly to the camera. You're going to put up an 800 number, too? Well, 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 what's unfortunate about what he just asked the voters? Unfortunately, my opponent can't vote for himself because he doesn't live in the district. But yet he <laughs> wants to ask the voters of Congressional District 4 to trust him on something that he doesn't even know the details of. The actuarial studies say that if you take individuals out who are 55 years and younger, you will make Medicare go insolvent. That is not Medicare is going to go insolvent, though, Senator. No, no, What's no, your no. plan? My I, I've plan? seen you say protect and preserve Medicare. Most Democrats love to criticize the Ryan plan because you can scare seniors, but mm -hmm. no Democrats I know of have any real plan. Show me My your plan. My plan is to, first of all, not change the benefit plan under Medicare or Social Security. I agree with my opponent. We need to keep our promises to people like Coach Tarkanian and every other senior, the 40 million of them who rely on that benefit. I agree with my opponent on that point. But where I disagree with him is that he wants to change those benefit structures in order to do what? Give a tax break to wealthy people. How are you to gonna, give how corporate you save subsidies the program, to banks Tell me and how you're big oil. Save it. That's, first of all, by ending the uh, tax rates and having them sunset back to 1993 levels under the Clinton administration, that alone would help to extend the solvency of Medicare. Keeping our promise to our parents and our grandparents, honoring our commitment to people who paid into the system to not leave them hanging with a new voucher program as my opponent does support. The people who are backing his campaign have endorsed have you, this plan. Have you ever heard him say, I support the Ryan plan? Have you ever heard him say it? He is, Has he ever said it? He is behind the proposal <laughs> that the vice presidential nominee of his party is professing under okay. the uh, well, We're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to take a break, Mr. Tarkanian. You're going to be able to speak again. Don't worry. At least they both agree. Jerry Tarkanian can keep his Medicare. This is a breakthrough tonight here on Ralston Report. Stick around. Find archive programs by going online to mynews3.com and clicking on Ralston Reports. Dean Heller, Wall Street's favorite senator. Heller voted to protect tax breaks for Wall Street corporations that move American jobs to India and China. And for Wall Street millionaires, another massive tax cut. But for Nevada middle class families, Heller voted to raise taxes. And he turned Medicare into a voucher program, which would increase out-of-pocket costs by $6,400. Dean Heller, breaks for Wall Street millionaires, bad for Nevada families. The Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. As a nurse, I know there are far too many women who lose their lives each year to cervical cancer. And sadly, it's preventable with a simple vaccine. But our Congressman Joe Heck voted against requiring insurance companies to pay for the vaccine. Joe Heck voted against saving lives. He sided with insurance companies instead. He's just too extreme for Nevada. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Most Nevadans do our best to get by and follow the rules in this economy, but not Stephen Horsford. Horsford's history of defaulting on loans, not paying his bills, and skipping court shows that he's playing by his own set of rules. That's not all. Horsford's been called arrogantly imperial and slimy by the media for selling access to himself for campaign donations and for his poor behavior in Carson City. If Stephen Horsford can't follow the rules in Nevada, can we trust him to make the rules in Washington? The National Republican Congressional Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Used to be a time 
when a good idea was a good idea. And it didn't matter whose idea it was. I support Democrat and Republican ideas when they're good for Nevada, and I oppose them when they're not. My opponent votes right down the party line. That kind of partisanship hurts us all. I'm Dean Heller. I approve this message because I believe Nevada will bounce back stronger than ever. But it's going to take ideas, not partisan politics. Ralston Reports is sponsored by City National Bank, Nevada's premier private and business bank. Visit cnb.com for more information. Welcome back to our debate for the Democratic and Republican nominees for Nevada's new congressional district, Stephen Horsford and Danny Tarkanian. Mr. Tarkanian, you wanted to respond to a couple things. Well, yeah, virtually everything my opponent states with my policy positions are a misrepresentation, and he has to because he's got a failed record as a legislature. He said I was in favor of continued subsidies for oil companies and big banks. I've come out on the record saying that we want to eliminate those types of subsidies. In fact, I talked about eliminating those loopholes on your show in the primary. Again, a misrepresentation. Uh, he's, but the difference between between him and myself was telling in the last statement that he said he believes you can pay down the debt by raising taxes on individuals here in our country every economist will tell you if you raise taxes on people in a recession you're gonna lose revenue it happened when he did it in the state legislature it'll happen if you do it in Washington DC well he's never been elected to anything so he doesn't understand that you actually have to work together to get things done we work together in a bipartisan way to pass a balanced budget in the, in the Nevada legislature. In the last legislative session, John, in fact, as you know, you covered it, we reduced spending nearly $600 million. We went through line item by line item of the state budget painstakingly because I did not want to make cuts to education or health care. But we reduced spending by six hundred million dollars. But you didn't want to raise a one point two billion dollar tax increase, did you not? You tried. We that. proposed a revenue reform that was more fair, equitable, that protected it was small businesses, defend that it. eliminated the, pay the payroll tax. And my opponent is is not being uh, very uh, clear on his position on this because what he is saying is that it is okay to end, change, modify Medicare, and then to give a tax break to those at the top. That is the proposal, uh, and that is what will happen if he is elected Let to Congress. Respond. Okay. First of all, uh, he proposed a $1.6 billion tax yeah. increase in the last legislative session, billion? which was going to... It was 1.2, but go okay, on. Which was going to which was gonna create an additional tax on businesses, the gross receipts tax on businesses. We are in an economy that we're not creating any jobs. We're losing jobs. His the unemployment rate has doubled since he's been in office, and he you wants blame, to you raise... You blame the legislature for the uh, doubling of the unemployment rate? Going, there's a global there's, recession. There's, Did you miss that sure, one? Sure, there's a lot of uh, things that go along with it, but when you're leading, and if you're a leader uh, of, of your state, then you should do whatever you can to alleviate those damages that had occurred. All my opponent did by raising rates on businesses and individuals in the state was cause the economy to get worse, jobs to get worse. It doubled quick, in his, it quick, doubled in his, quick, in his four quick, years. Quick. I, I, clearly, he is against Governor Brian Sandoval's 2013 budget proposal. All right, that's the end. You're against Brian Sandoval's budget. I don't think he cares about that, though. Danny Tarkanian, Stephen Horsford, best of luck to you Thank on November you, 6th. Thanks for coming on. Good to see you. Next, Ralston reports the debate for a pivotal seat in the Nevada State Senate. Debates just keep on coming here. Republican Steve Kirk and Democrat Joyce Woodhouse square off. That's next, Ralston reports. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great night. News 3, your home for Decision 2012. Doc, I dreamed a kangaroo gave me cash. That's Rapid Roo. With an easy pay installment loan from Rapid Cash, you get more cash than a payday loan. What do you think, Doc? I think you went to Rapid Cash. Love that Rapid Cash. <laughs> I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. These appliances could have been made here, in America, but a company called Global Tech maximized profits by paying its workers next to nothing under sweatshop conditions in China. When Mitt Romney led Bain, they saw Global Tech as a good investment, even knowing that the firm promoted its practice of exploiting low-wage labor to its investors. Mitt Romney, tough on China? Since when? 
we could tell you that our physicians come from some of the top medical schools in the nation. We could brag that we've led the way in medical technology for our community. Sure, we've got the first high-speed molecular nuclear cardiac imaging camera in Nevada. But at the end of the day, there's only one reason you count on us. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. If you are in foreclosure or you are short selling your home, you should know the Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act of 2007 is scheduled to expire at the end of 2012. If you don't act now, you could owe the IRS thousands of dollars. Don't wait any longer. Call us for a free consultation. How am I going to get a payday loan without any checks? Oh, it's easy with a rapid cash swipe and go payday loan. All you need is a debit card. I don't need checks? No, you just swipe your card and walk out with cash. I don't need this anymore.